let the peace, love and blessings of Jehovah God and his Christ be upon the entire world. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Beware of the scoffers around you. Everlasting gospel delivered to the entire world by the Holy Spirit of Truth. Leader Olumba Olumba Obu, the supernatural teacher. First lesson, Jude chapter 1 verse 18. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. Second lesson, Matthew chapter 24 verse 11. And many false prophets shall rise and shall deceive many. Golden text, 1 John chapter 2 verse 19. They went out from us, but they were not of us. For if they had been of us, they would no doubt have continued with us. But they went out that they might be manifest that they were not all of us. Quote, Brethren, that is the revelation of our lessons today. The theme of this gospel serves as an eye-opener to those who are God's own elect. It is an interesting gospel to the understanding of true believers from the various gospels that had been preached throughout the whole world. There is none that has no connection with this very gospel since it is a bone of contention to many. From daily observations, it is always a surprise that you can see some people sitting together with you as brethren of the same faith, eating and singing all along as seen in the Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. But suddenly they move out and begin to spread useless and careless talks about this new kingdom. They will even proclaim that the leader is Christ and God. And yet, within a short while, they rush out and begin to blackmail that very leader. They start calling him all sorts of names as King of Beelzebub, Juju Priest, or even a murderer. This should not surprise you because the gospel of today is the clear answer. This group of people can be seen among the apostles, the students, the, chorus, the choristers, the elders, and in short form, every section of the fold. But in as much as you have had this gospel planted in you, when you see them, do not doubt, because as the scriptures say, this is the last generation and the fullness of time when everything must come to fulfillment. You are also reminded that it is not all the children of Abraham that come from Abraham, and not all the children of Israel that are Israelites. Therefore, not all those who clothe themselves with the white robes are actually the members of Brotherhood of the Cross and Star. No matter the length of the time they remain, these personalities are not the real children of God because they are deceitful prophets and must surely depart from us. All these must happen in order to conform to what had been written in the Bible, that heaven and earth shall pass away, but not a jot 
of the word that comes from God will pass without being fulfilled. Therefore, nothing that had been happening or will happen now that had not been written about and this gospel reveals what had long been written about this time. They disregard true worshippers, brethren, consider the daily events around you. Have you not come to realize the fact that these deceitful workers have filled the entire world? They have no spirit of God in them. They only seek for their own livelihood through hardship. Yet, when they see those who serve God, they turn to mock at them, giving them all sorts of names. They jeer at you. And if you try to follow God with your implicit faith, they will tell you that you are struggling for nothing and that you are not worshipping God in the correct way. If at any time you happen to mention to them about forsaking sins or that it is proper for one to love one another, they will mock and make jest of you they are the people who open many churches, joining every denomination, seeking for their high position as chairman and treasurers in order to satisfy their own selfish ends. And they would remain in churches struggling for money and placing their minds on nothing but material things of this world. While inside the church, they cause confusion, they fight, they fornicate, they quarrel, steal, and commit all sorts of evil vices. And when they become tired, they simply jump out. These persons can be found in all churches, in schools, in offices, in marketplaces, even along the streets, and all over the world. They are not of God, but they are stumbling blocks to those who want to serve God. They are tricky and cunning in their ways of life. You could be entrusted with some money by your organization for some purpose. These persons will do everything to remove the money, thereby causing you to have a bad name among the fold. This group of deceivers go about performing strange wonders just so to mislead the chosen ones of God, if possible. Bad companies corrupt, good manners, brethren. Think of someone who is a pastor, a bishop, or a reverend. He is in charge of a church or a battle. Yet, he will cause all the women and young girls to fornicate with him. What sort of dignitary is he? Is he not among the group of false prophets? They act just to fulfill the scripture that wherever the children of God are, there you will find these coffers in order to mislead the weaker souls. If they join any organization whose uniform is black, they will sew their own up to three or five in different styles. It is, if it is white, they will equally sew the best types of white sutans and other patterns. They put on this clothing and mix among the children of God in order, <clears throat> in order to cause confusion because they are not out to serve, but they mix easily among the women in order to cause them to fall away from the truth. Someone may think that members in an organization are not willing to serve God. This is not so. 
but it is because of the influence of these confusionists that the work of God seems to be dying out completely. The children of God are found all over the world, but according to the scriptures, it is said that at the end of time, many false prophets will rise. They will be clothed in wolf skin and pretend to be serving God. The preaching is different. Their footsteps and manners are quite out of line. And because they belong to the world, the worldly people love them. But where no eye position is allowed, they run out and start to blaspheme against that organization. On the other hand, if you caution or pretend to overlook their bad behavior because of the outward personality, they will plant deep roots and corrupt all the members and where they find enthusiastic members trying to handle God's work, they will discourage them by telling them that God wants only the heart and not practical services. With the so-called ordained pastors, apostles or prophets, etc., when anyone is sick, Instead of offering prayer, they will instruct and direct that various drugs stuck in their briefcase can heal. They go from house to house telling people that God helps those who help themselves. They confuse people by teaching that God does not forbid fornication because God made Adam and Eve and that he created women for men for this purpose. They confirm their vain teachings that men and women cannot stay without fornicating. Therefore, watch out that these men are deceivers mockers and jesters because they have no spirit of God and do not listen to the word of God. But in case you really want to know their works, join them in an organization, watch their actions and you will see surely that they are outstanding. Therefore, take this gospel as a watchword in order to arm yourself never to be trapped by these interlopers be vigilant else you stumble brethren there were some good prophets some good elders students or choristers but because of the behaviors of these false prophets they were misled and they left their positions. So it is to prove that if you visit other churches, ask those who left and they will tell you their different stories being that they were trapped by these deceitful prophets. In reality, there is no gain in their false action. But they do this in order to test the faith of the children of God. Remember the temptations of our Lord Jesus Christ when the Spirit led him into the wilderness. After the 40 days of fasting, he was tempted by the devil. Since Christ knew and entrusted his faith in his Father, he never fell a victim. So it is also connected with Adam and the forbidden tree in the middle of the garden, which God directed him not to eat of its fruit, being for good and evil. This tree called division among the children of God. The children of God are born just like that. So are these false coffers and they try you, but never to succeed, this is seen among human race. In a certain family, you can find some who are born children of God, 
while others are not. Remember that Moses and Aaron were of the same parents. And then Moses made a true prophet while Aaron, his brother, was false. When Moses went to receive the Ten Commandments from God, his brother Aaron turned the evil passions of the children of Israel and made a molded calf out of their gold trinkets for them to worship as a god. This action displeased Moses on arrival and he became very angry and broke the slate of the laws. From this you can see that the question of individual characters cannot be waved off by prayers. It is one's own destiny, therefore you are forewarned. You often pray in your daily prayers that Lord, Lord, let thy kingdom come. This is the kingdom you have been praying for and these false prophets are out pretending to be the disciples of Christ, visiting from house to house, from town to town, delivering false teachings in order to lead many souls to destruction. They pretend to work hand in hand with you as children of God, but at the same time they will start criticizing and they run out when their evil works do not fit and begin to cause embarrassment all over. It was because of this that our Lord Jesus Christ said at the close of every sermon, He who have ears, let him hear. Because, you know, he knew that not all those who gathered to hear his teachings were the children of God. These false prophets would pretend to love God by their prostrate, prostrating and knocking their heads on the ground several times. They weep for their sins and show all manner of repentance. Yet our Lord Jesus Christ has identified them as deceivers and mockers. They do not cherish people, pointing out their own mistakes. And if you do this, they will blame and quote you as having no love. In fact, they are neither good for fufu nor porridge. They render outward services, brethren, at your station. Look closely and you will distinguish these false workers, even their personal appearance. This reveals that not all those who put on the white sultan are true brotherhood of the cross and star. They worship God outwardly, but inwardly they are far, far from him. Most people become worried about their behavior because they speak and discuss and discuss in such deceitful manner likely to cause a breach of peace until they carry out their operations. At any time you bring in any good suggestion or even call the name of the leader, they turn to oppose you outright. Do not be surprised because since they are born like that, whatever they perform must be faulty too. Inside the church, they place marks on their seats, acquiring a special position all the time. And if anyone happens to make use of those seats, they start to struggle and quarrel over it. Never criticize and do not ask them to quit, but at long last they will live on their own and they might have, after they might have gone out, 
and you happen to see them and ask to know why they departed, they will turn to say, Oh, leave me with your brother who does the cross and star. There has been nothing much to be seen there. They blaspheme against the leader and proclaim that they are worshipping Jesus. But Jesus said, blood on their behalf. Because you know that's what they say, that Jesus shed his blood on their behalf. They curse you as fools, that you are worshipping man. And because of this, you become confused and get mixed up. They will remain inside the church and oppose God. If love is being preached, they say they are being saved by grace that no one can love one another. They never fast and will abuse those who go on fasting as worse fools, thinking that they are punishing themselves and that Christ had already fasted and ended fasting for mankind. They would neither enter the kingdom now allow any other person to enter. These personalities are many and can be seen everywhere. Let our first lesson be re-examined. First lesson, Jude chapter 1 verse 18. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly loss. Brethren, the scoffers referred to in the above passage are those who claim to be church goers, calling themselves Christians, yet they continue in fornication to quarrel and getting angry all the time. They preach in churches, even inside their cars, you see them along the streets telling other people to forsake stealing or fornication or anger or bearing false news against one another. They pray with a spirit that should even move mountains, yet within a short while they turn round and steal other people's money or property and go off on their way. During their preaching, they will first quote and open where it is written, Woe unto him who serves drink to his brother, yet they will depart from what they quote and preach outside such passage. They know why they quote that passage, in case there is a child of God around, their areas of work. If arguments arise, they will argue that the Bible says one should drink a little for the protection of his stomach, but never to become drunk. They are the preachers who stand at the pulpit and tell the congregation that God helps those who help themselves. Your brother who is a bishop or a pastor or a reverend may sit on a discussion with you and if you happen to tell him that it is against God's instruction never to drink or take drugs, he will oppose and claim that drinking is not against God's doctrine, that he has been studying religion abroad and has never come across that portion in the Bible and that one should take medicine for health protection. These church dignitaries try to serve God out of their own personal understanding and not with the laid down principles of God and by so doing they lead many sheep astray. If a bishop or a pastor could render such teaching that there is no harm in drinking, taking drugs or fornicating, what then 
is expected of the members. By this, sins are multiplied. The pretenders, brethren, as part of their apparel, these dignitaries wear talisman and rings and get into the altar to preach and render sermon counting for themselves that they are being protected by foreign powers. This must happen because it was said that a time would come when people would depart from the truth and please themselves with all worldly things. The chosen children of God cannot face any stumbling blocks except those destined for perdition. Therefore, never be angry whenever you hear they mock and ridicule you. To some extent, they cannot stop performing these functions being part of their duties in fulfillment of the word of God, but be steadfast in your faith with God. Here in Brotherhood, you find them going about giving false visions and demanding money for it. They will tell the outstation that the Father requires the money as donation. Their visions are based on witchcraft, enemies, and Juju being buried in your home, they will direct you to native doctors in order to prepare concoction. They sell the holy oil and the water. Therefore, whenever you accept such evil practices, you fail. They have power of vision just like the children of God. They preach with zeal. But full of deceits, they are the faulty workers. But my happiness is that I know that at the fullness of time, all of them will depart one after the other. What is most pleasing is that they cannot mislead the real children of God, chosen and ordained for this kingdom. Therefore, this gospel reveals to you why this must happen because by destiny by destiny they are what they are i am known by my sheep brethren during the teachings of our lord jesus christ he at one time said to the multitude you will not believe me because you are not of my sheep but my sheep know me, and I know them by name also. The Father who gave them to me is so mighty that nobody can get them out of my fold. The same statement is referred to you in Brotherhood of the Cross and Star, that no matter the extent of the shame and torture, my true sheep, cannot be deceived and taken away from me. You are witnesses that no matter the trials, yet when you become stronger in faith, they become disappointed and fall out. At times, you will be confronted by this group offering you fat sum of money with luxurious cars pleading with you to forsake brother of the cross and star, but if to no avail, they will become marveled as to what your leader has done to block your mind against such wealth as they turn as they turn it, even within your family circle, if you do not agree to their ungodly discussions your name will be crossed off from the family meetings yet you will show no concern yes this is so because the father who gave you to me is mighty and nobody can easily snatch you away if on the other hand 
they see a wealthy member, they will ask the less fortunate one whether he really wants to join Brothers of Cross and Star. If the fellow gives consent, they will turn and inquire from him what is he ready to sacrifice in order to become rich because the richer members have reached the final circle of the church and whether the less fortunate can afford a human being to offer thereafter when they turn round to see the poor dancing with all happiness these mockers will ask if the less fortunate is indeed the member of Brother of the Cross and Star, that he is poor because he has not reached the final circle. Therefore, be thankful to God about these various statements as laid down in the Bible as a guide to the children of God as touching this present time. No sheep of mine shall perish, brethren, God's own elect should have no boast of themselves. It is not out of your steadfastness that made you to remain in brother of the cross and star, but through his own promise, and that none of his sheep shall be separated from him. You have heard about Job, whose fate was counted for him as righteousness upon his tribulations by sickness, death, loss of wealth, and the like, caused by these very scoffers, yet he did not stumble. Instead, he became richer than ever. Even our Lord Jesus Christ, since he was the Son of God, the Father protected him, and he did not stumble. From this, it is clearly seen that Satan has no power over the children of God. Satan, being of the world, only goes about preaching false doctrine to the people of the world who are being misled to destruction. But the children of God always listen to the word of God and know this lesson is being delivered to you so that you can be guided accordingly. Now, brethren, listen attentively to what this second lesson will reveal. Read the second lesson again.